More and more children are out of school, but parents don't want math learning to stop. They're turning to Mathnasium at home. Real-time math instruction tailored to your child's exact educational needs. It's the same face-to-face -face live instruction used in our centers for over 15 years, now on a computer. Your child can keep their math skills sharp, catch up, or soar ahead from home or anywhere with an internet connection. To learn if Mathnasium at Home is right for your child, visit mathnasium.com slash at home. Mathnasium at Home, changing lives through math. Hi everyone, welcome back to Mathnasium Schoolhouse. Today we are looking at angles. So we're gonna look at angle relationships, and then as the title suggest, uh, suggests, we'll look at angle relationships um, when it comes to shapes, so 2D shapes that we've explored in prior lessons when we looked at uh, geometric shapes and their properties, as well as area and perimeter and all of that good stuff. Uh, today we'll look at the relationships of their angles, both interior angles and tomorrow especially we'll focus on exterior angles. So some of you might have already explored some of these relationships in class. Wonderful, fantastic, bring that knowledge with you here. Uh, and for those of you for whom this is fairly new, absolutely feel free to follow along. Uh, if you find it challenging in some parts, your best bet, as always, is to reach out to your nearest Mathnasium and we will be more than happy to create a personalized uh, learning plan for you where we can really figure out where it is that you're at in your math learning and then um, get you building up your skills from there to really uh, tackle a concept such as this, angle relationships. So you'll see that I kind of combined a bunch of different things that you might have already learned or seen or heard about angles. Uh, so hopefully some of them you can help me out with, others you learn something new. And as the title already tells you, today is part one of a two-day series. So tomorrow we'll revisit some of these um, again and look at some new skills as well. Hello everyone, love to see everyone saying hi. Go ahead and along with saying hello to everyone joining us here today, share with us your grade level, maybe where you will be at in September. Um, and maybe what you know about angles. I'd love to see where some of you guys are at in terms of what you know. All right. And I did not mention this just yet, but if you go, I'm just trying to see the comments here. Uh, if you go onto our Facebook page, you will see the follow along document that you can use alongside the practice problems that I um, address with you today. All right, so I'll be using it um, with you. And if you want it in front of you as well to fill out, go ahead and do that. And as always, have a sheet of paper and something to write with, and we can get started. Perfect. Eighth grade, I'm saying wonderful. This is perfect, perfect level for you. Seventh grade, awesome. So I see you guys looked at the recommended uh, grade levels, which is perfect. Uh, so let's get started. Let me go to my whiteboard here. I'll be going back and forth between my whiteboard and my PDF, that follow along document. Um, Ooh, I see 10th grade, love it. Love to see some high school students with us today, perfect. All right, so let's get started with some of the more basic angle relationships that you would have been introduced to when you first uh, start talking about angles in the classroom. And actually the first discussion might have been something along the lines of using a protractor, measuring angles, um, looking at acute angles, obtuse angles, right angles. So we'll use some of that knowledge here today but we're gonna start off with something called supplementary angles. And if any of you have heard about that, you've heard of that term, go ahead and share with me what you believe supplementary angles are. I'll write out the word here. Maybe you're more familiar with seeing the spelling. So supplementary angles. We'll start off here because we'll use this knowledge, you'll hear me use this term a lot in some of the angle relationships we explore. Okay, so go ahead and share with me what that means to you. Let me pull out another color here. So the first thing we'll start off with is a straight angle. Okay, so let's say I have a straight line here. Maybe not the straightest the way that I drew it, but you'd take out a straight edge, draw yourself a straight line, and you'd form what is called a straight angle. Okay, as, as uh, simply put, it's exactly what I've described it to be. It's an angle formed from this straight line um, and we can go into depth to really define it as being created by, as you can see from this one point, two rays facing the opposite directions, okay? Regardless, what we need to know about it today is that it measures, I see add up to 180, so I see you guys are 
helping me out with the definition of supplementary angles. So we'll start off here, understanding, being on the same page here, um, that straight angles measure to be 180 degrees. Thank you for the compliment. Nice handwriting. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, so we have a straight angle here, forms 180 degrees. Taking that a step further, as James uh, commented, I can see um, two angles. When we talk about two angles being um, supplementary to each other, that means that they're, the sum of those angles add up to be exactly this 180 degrees. So let's say, let me just remove this here for just a second. Let's say I had, you know what, I'll just use my green here. I don't know, just creating a random um, ray stemming from this midpoint again. Uh, let's say that I called this angle A and angle B. What is the sum of A and B? Let me just specify that. The sum of angles A and B is exactly that 180 degrees. All right, let me see what you guys are sharing with me here. Is this geometry? Yeah, it'd be within this, this stream of geometry. So I see a lot of 180 degrees showing up for me. Very, very good. So let me maybe pose a problem to you while we're talking about supplementary angles. So let me remove this. So what if I had here, I said that this was 25 degrees and I asked you to find angle X. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's focus on the math here, but I truly appreciate your compliments. Um, so what would be angle, the measurement of angle X here? Okay, and one thing that we would use in our discussion of uh, supplementary angles and the next topic that we look into in just a second, we're looking for parts within holes. So one discussion that we can have here is we're looking for the part X within the bigger hole of 180 degrees because of what we just described, which is that the sum of angles that are supplementary to one another is 180 degrees. So how about you guys share with me what the measurement of angle X is here? I see 100. So what is, sorry, what is the definition of supplementary angles? They add up to be, the sum here is 180 degrees. So I'm seeing Karen and Christine and Austin, wonderful, and a few more of you are sharing with me that angle X is equal to 155 degrees, which is exactly right. And you would have found that by subtracting 180 degrees minus 25 degrees, and that result is X, which gives you 155. And another way to look at this is the part is equal to the whole minus the other part, in case that kind of helps you figure out here how we're solving for X. So this is just a part within this bigger hole. All right. Perfect. So let me remove this and let's jump to supplement, uh, sorry, complementary angles. And that's where after this, we'll jump to the worksheet and work on a few of those exercises as well. So go ahead and share with me what you understand uh, as part of complementary angles. So let me write it out here. Complementary angles. Let's see what you guys are sharing with me here. Okay. What do we understand about complementary angles? Hello to all of you that are just joining us now. Feel free to help me out here. So whereas before we had to understand a straight angle, I mentioned that some of the earlier conversations you might have about angles within the classroom would be acute angles, obtuse angles, and in that discussion, also right angles. So let's talk about what a right angle is here. So maybe I'll use my green here. So whereas before we had two rays stemming from op into opposite directions, here we have one ray is perpendicular to the other. And typically when you see a right angle, you'll see this little square here, denoting that they are in fact perpendicular, which to us also means that they form, and I see you guys are sharing the answer with me, thank you so much, that there's a 90 degree angle between these two rays, which then means if I split this, let's say to two angles, but I can also have three, four, and so on. Let's say I had a ray stemming like this, and again, I called this angle A and angle B. 
the sum of these two angles this time is, as you all are sharing with me, 90 degrees. Beautiful. Okay. It's right to give a compliment. I love that. Thank you. Oh, what a great, what a great way to put that. All right, so angle A plus angle B is 90 degrees. So let's use that knowledge to answer one exercise that I pose here, and then we'll jump to that follow along worksheet. So let's say I give you simply um, something like this, and I simply say, so there is a right angle formed between these two, and let's say I say, let's do this a bit better, this is 45 degrees, what can you tell me about angle Y over here? Yeah, if you're just reading the comments to catch up, um, one more time, complementary angles, the sum of the angles add up to be one, sorry, to be 90 degrees. All right, so what do we get here? What is the measurement of angle Y? It's 45 degrees. Yeah, that's why I had to fix my image before because I had my uh, ray extending just below what would be the middle and I knew that this would be the middle because 45 plus 45 gives me 90. All right, so here the measurement of angle Y is in fact 45 degrees and if you don't see exactly why, it's because 90 degrees minus that 45 degrees is also coincidentally 45 degrees. And again, the way that we can look at this is talk about the part being equal to the whole minus the other part. I'll just use a W and a P there, okay? Same as what we saw before, this time the whole is slightly different. This time the whole is 90 degrees versus before it was 90 degrees. So let's jump to the first few exercises of that follow along document. You're gonna see my PDF here in just a second. Supposing that technology is in my favor today. There we go. So let me erase what I have on the board here and let's look at questions number one and two together. So they're just simply asking us to find the missing values. Great. What would we find for number one? 45 is half of 90? Yes, it is. Perfect. So find the missing value, which means we're looking for angle K in question number one. How would we find that? Well, one way to just simply look at this is we have a straight angle and then a ray that kind of divides that 180 degrees into two parts. We know one of the parts, so it could be as simple, and it is as simple really, as saying that that part, which is our K, angle K, is going to be equal to our whole minus our other part And you don't have to write this out, you can do this all mentally. So if you have already, wonderful. And I see some of you already helping me out. Uh, our whole, because we're talking about a straight angle, is 180 degrees. And I'm just going to subtract that part that I do already know, which is 49 degrees. And whatever that difference is, is my answer. Let's see if I'm seeing it somewhere here. I see it 131 with a question mark. You can erase that question mark because that is absolutely correct. So it is 131 degrees. Okay. So K, the measurement of angle K is 131 degrees. Does that reasonably make sense? If I go back to my diagram, I definitely have an obtuse angle being formed. It looks like it's definitely greater than right, a right angle, greater than 90 degrees. Uh, so 131 does visually make sense to me. All right, let's move on to question number two. Again, we don't have to write all of this out for the work, just for those that maybe are seeing this for the first time. Number two, it looks slightly different than number one, but the procedure will be very, very much similar. This time our hole is 90 degrees. Why? Because I see two perpendicular rays. Maybe for you guys it's like this. Uh, two perpendicular rays versus two rays stemming into opposite directions, which means that I'm dealing with complementary angles, which means that when I look for angle K, sorry, angle X in this case, I'm looking for the whole, which is 90 degrees, and I'm subtracting from that, what is that, 33 degrees. 
and whatever that difference is. So let's see if I'm seeing it anywhere here. I am, thank you, Bina. That's the first one I'm seeing here. Uh, and Megan and Lindsay, beautiful. I am seeing 57 degrees. So uh, the measurement of angle X is equal to 57 degrees. Let's do a few more together on this worksheet. Let's look at numbers three and four as well. So let's hope this moves nicely for me. Beautiful. So let's look at number three here. I have, again, two rays that are perpendicular to one another. So I'm thinking about complementary angles and I'm looking for the measurement of angle one. Well, hopefully you guys are thinking, hey, this looks very, very similar to what we just did. So it looks like we're working on um, finding the part within a hole that is 90 degrees, that measures 90 degrees. And so the measurement, let's say this, of angle one is simply 90 degrees. Make sure you're writing that degree symbol because that is what uh, we're talking about here, the measurement of these angles. And you're subtracting the part that we do know, which is 71 degrees. And let's see if I'm seeing the answer somewhere. I am, Austin, thank you for sharing. Megan, Christine, beautiful. Uh, and you guys are saying 19 degrees. Okay. If you're not following along, if this is very new to you, I mentioned this before, you're probably your best um, step forward will be to um, reach out to your nearest Mathnasium and we can definitely see what skills you have in place to tackle concepts like these and build a learning plan that's most appropriate for you. So there's your 19 degrees for number three. What about number four? This one's may look tricky and challenging, but I promise you it's not. It's just putting together our knowledge of supplementary and complementary angles together. I know it looks confusing, uh, Mala, but I promise you can do this if you are following along with numbers, with questions one, two, and three. So let's kind of break this down step by step. So once we've kind of said to ourselves, okay, I can do this, we're looking, we're looking at um, the measurement of angle VCR. So the probably the first thing you need to understand is what something like angle VCR means. And if that's new to you, again, that's one skill that you should master before coming to something like this. And for those of you that just need a reminder, when you have an angle that's named, let's say VCR in this case, let me just draw any angle here. You start at V, you meet at C, and you end at R. It's a very simple way of putting it, but that's essentially what we're talking about here. So let's find, now visually find uh, angle VCR within our diagram there. Once you locate it, okay, you might think, okay, now it's pretty easy to see that, first of all, we have a straight angle. On the right side, we see a right angle had formed which means that the other part has to be a 90 degree angle as well, a right angle. Hopefully you follow along with my reasoning there. But then that means to me that the measurement of angle VCR is actually 90 degrees minus 53 degrees. And let's see if anyone has helped me with that already. I see a 37 appearing, perfect. Yep, that's exactly right, it's 37 degrees. And if you need to pause the, the video right now to see exactly how we got to that answer, feel free to do that and then resume it to carry along with the lesson. Perfect. Then the question is to also find the measurement of angle XCV. How do I find that? Well, I start to look at XCV, so I've located it. I've located it in my image, and I start to think, okay, so XCV is actually composed of two angles. So I might, let me remove this, just to make sure we don't run out of space. So XCV is actually composed of, if you look at it, it'll be the sum of angles XCR, and RCV, okay? And the reason I like those two parts to form my sum is because I can find the angle, the measurement of angle XCR pretty easily because it is 
com the complement to uh, XCB. And XCB I know is measured as 17 degrees, so I can subtract that from the 90 degrees to actually get that measurement. Okay, and that'll turn out to be 73 degrees. Again, if you didn't follow along there, maybe go back to what I just described and listen to my reasoning there. And then I look at the measurement of angle RCV, but that we've already talked about is um, complement the complementary angle to VCS. On top of that, we've already found it in that previous problem, and we found it to be 37 degrees. So when I add those two, you guys are already 10 steps ahead of me. You told me that the sum is 110. Beautiful. All right. Hopefully you all follow along, along there. You don't have to write it down if you're following along with what I'm saying. If it's helpful to you, go ahead and do that. Um, whatever works best for you. We're all different types of learners here. All right. All right. That was uh, numbers one, two, three, and four. Before we move on to number five, which let me just show you here what it is. Let's briefly talk about what happens when we have two lines that intersect like this, okay? So what can we say here? And I'll maybe wait to see what you guys say, but let, let me draw one of these out here. So let's say I have one like this and one like this. I'll just call this line M and this one, sorry, L and then M. And then let me just say, let me call this angle one, two, three, and four. What relationships, if you've seen this before, or maybe you want to take an educated guess, what relationships can you observe from these four angles? What could you tell me? Which ones look like they are uh, similar, possibly equivalent? What can you tell me? Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Right. And then we'll use that knowledge to tackle question number five. Okay. What can we say here? One and three are equal. Beautiful. I was looking for something like that. Yes, they are vertical angles. Yeah, so we're going to talk about vertical angles in just a second. We can definitely see them here. Before we jump to that, we're going to call something linear pairs. Okay, so we can see here angles one and four are linear pairs and two and three are linear pairs. And what can we say about them? Uh, we can say, and I'm just trying to see if any of you, yeah, you're, you're talking about adjacent angles. You're saying four and two are equal because you guys already know about vertical angles. I love it. Vertical lines or uh, intersecting lines, I should say, beautiful. I'm thinking they're all adding up to 180. You're thinking exactly the right thing. Yes, so for, uh, linear pairs of angles are supplementary to one another. So I told you that this term would be repeating, and that's exactly right here. So angles one and four are supplementary to one another. So one more time, that means that when you add the measurements of these two angles, they, their sum is 180 degrees. You can do the same thing with angles two and three. And then I'm going to jump ahead to what you all are sharing with me. Vertical angles, then, are those that are opposite to one another, and they are, in fact, equal to one another which means we can tackle a few more problems knowing all of that. So let's look at question number five here. Okay. So if they're the same, that means we only need to do two problems. I love that you just put that together. Yes, exactly. Very good. Before we even tackled the problem, you already started to think about how we can use that knowledge to minimize how much work we have to do. And that's exactly the way a mathematician thinks. So let's look at number five, okay? So we're looking at the values of E and F. So the, the one, I'm gonna say tricky, but I don't want that to scare any of us, is that E and F are within expressions of the angles that we need to find. So don't get too scared just yet, we'll do this together. We'll do this together using the knowledge of vertical angles and linear pairs. So where do we wanna start off? You might decide to start off by looking at the uh, vertical angles and saying 7E, that measurement, is going to be equal to 56 degrees. I like it, let's do it. So 7E, because we understand vertical angles, and these are just two intersecting lines, has to be equal to 56 degrees. 
And if you solve that, you're essentially trying to find what do I multiply by 7 to get 56? That's exactly right. It's 8. Okay. And you can confirm that by saying is 7 times 8, is that measurement equal to 56? Yes, it is. Okay. So there's E. And then you kind of have two different ways you can go, right? Given that we're now looking at uh, vertical, sorry, linear pairs of angles, which means that they're supplementary to one another, uh, we can look at, let me write this down. We can look at 7f minus 16, that measurement being equal to, or I should say, uh, plus 7e, that being equal to 180 degrees and just substitute what E is. But since we know that 7E is also equal to 56, there's no need to do that. Although it would give you the exact same answer, you can just treat it as this. Okay? But just because we're using variables here and expressions here, doesn't mean that we're looking at something way more complex than what we talked about before. We're using our knowledge of vertical angles and linear pairs of angles, understanding which angles are going to be equal to one another, and then solving for expressions. So for those of you that haven't maybe worked with solving expressions just yet, you might need to visit that before tackling these, right? But don't worry if you can't solve for it. The idea is that these are equivalent, so then you try to solve for f. So I'm gonna kind of jump ahead. If you do that, you end up finding that f is equal to 20, supposing that Sandra did her math correctly. <laughs> okay, and you can double check that. Uh, and again, for those of you that maybe need to revisit solving equations, there is a Mathnasium Schoolhouse lesson available on that. And if that's a bit too difficult to follow along with, you are more than welcome, as always, to reach out to your nearest Mathnasium, and we will be more than happy to help you with that. All right. So I'm going to erase that, and let's jump to number six. So let's make sure this works nicely for us. All right. So let's look at number six here. Find the values of G and H. Okay. So we know something about linear pairs of angles. Uh, we know something about vertical angles. Let's at least form the equivalent uh, statements and then uh, the math we can do separately. I can maybe, I'll just provide the answer and you can double check that after. So what do we understand about G and H? Well, we understand that 9g minus 1, so 9 multiplied by g, whatever that number is, subtract 1 from that, plus 100 should be equal to 180 degrees because they are linear pairs of angles which are supplementary to one another. So we know this, plus 100. And I probably did not have to write this whole thing because if I know something is being to 100 to get me 180, I know that this something is equal to 80, right? So whichever way you want to put it. G, supposing again that Sandra did her math correctly, should give you 9, which actually I can confirm that very quickly. 9 times 9 is 81, subtract 1 is 80. So, phew, Sandra did that right. <laughs> And uh, how do I find H? Well, H, I can look at the uh, diagram I have there and simply look at the vertical angles. So you might have also heard this being referred to as opposite angles, which, as we already stated, are equal to one another. So I can write down the fact that 5 times H plus 30, whatever that measurement is, is also equal to 100. And so either solve algebraically for this variable or play around with numbers to think 5 multiplied by what, then added 30 to that result gives me 100, and that should give you 14. Okay. Let's see if any of you got there. Oops. How did I get 80? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that comment beforehand. Uh, I got 80 because I said that 9g minus 1 plus 100 is equal to 180. All right. How did I get 14 here? I see a question mark there. Oh, maybe you're just confirming your answer. 
Uh, yeah, so we can subtract 30 from 100, get 70, and 70 divided by 5 is my h. Okay? That's a whole different lesson, so if you need to um, understand and practice more on solving uh, the equations, you could definitely revisit that lesson another day. So let's jump ahead to question number 7, 8, and 9 here. Maybe we'll do just a few more and save the rest for tomorrow. So before we look at what we're being asked for in these questions, let's understand what we're dealing with here. Maybe have a discussion here on some terminology that we'll use. So in this case, we're told some additional information. So we don't just have two intersecting lines. We have intersecting lines. So I'll just kind of redraw them here. We have line L here. Let's make sure that's in the camera. But then we're also told that M intersects L. So it almost looks like it's a nice horizontal. But that N also intersects line L, but N is parallel to M. So let's just keep that in mind. Because it's helpful when you, re when you look at um, more relationships between angles. And for those of you that maybe have already seen this in the classroom, I'd love to see in the comments, any relationships that um, you, uh, you understand from this visual here before we kind of jump ahead to the expressions. Yeah, if you learned some of this and you forgot it, that's totally okay. But hopefully when we revisit some of these in the practice problems, you can grasp it a bit quicker. Um, and if not, maybe you can start to understand some of the relationships on your own here. So what do you think is true or false here? we jump to numbers, I believe it's seven, eight, and nine. Okay, so I could add in a bunch of numbers here and we can talk about vertical angles being equal to one another. We can talk about linear pairs being equal to one another, or sorry, supplementary to one another. Okay. So that is so that is knowledge that I can use here already. Um, and then you might hear me refer to also same side interior angles. We'll use that knowledge, corresponding angles. Some of you might have seen this as C patterns, F patterns, um, different terms that uh, teachers will use in the classroom to really help us out. So whatever it is that you want to use, I'm sure I'll follow along with what you uh, help me out here. Okay, so let's carry on. Let's look at our specific diagram up there. Let me move down in the PDF so you can see what we're looking for in... Question seven, eight, and nine, that should be enough. Okay, so let's look at question number seven first. We're looking for angle X. Let me give you a few seconds to see what you guys come up with in the comments. How can I solve for angle X? And we might end it off after these three exercises. And carry on tomorrow. What can I find out about angle X? Well, we kind of just worked on these already. I don't need to jump to new information just yet. Let me use what I already know. I don't want to complicate things in my mind just yet. And I can already see that we have two intersecting lines between L and M. And so I can easily state confidently that these two should be equal to one another. And the reason I used, well, the expression on the left is because it contains the X that I'm looking for. And the reason I used the 78 is because it doesn't, A, it doesn't contain a variable, so I'm just solving for one variable here. And I know the relationship between the two opposite angles. And I see someone already help me out, helping me out, beautiful. If I solve for x, x will be equal to 69 here. Beautiful. Okay, that one was fairly easy, I hope. Uh, let's jump to number eight then. We're looking for y. I'll keep number seven there for now. What can, we, what can we kind of put together to then solve for, for number eight, which is where we're looking for the measurement of angle y? Okay. And this is where, first of all, you're, you might try to, and this is what I do at least, this is the way I try to reason out, is I wanna have just one variable within my equation um, because it's gonna make it simpler for me to solve. So I might try my best to find what 
8y minus 2, how it relates to the 78 degrees. And I, at this moment, can't really figure it out, let's just say. But if I knew x plus 9, which I do, because I know that x plus 9 is equal to 78, then I can relate it to 8y minus 2. So I'm still relating it to 78 degrees. Now I'm more confident as to how it relates to this expression. And what these are called here, so this is maybe what you would have seen as the C pattern. When you have these two angles, what do we know about them? Let's see what you guys will say here. What can we say about these two angles before I kind of give you the, before I give you that answer? What could we say here? So if you know um, the C pattern, if you would have heard of it um, as the C pattern or same side interior angles, we know that these are supplementary to each other. Are they acute? Um, that doesn't tell me anything about the relationship, um, but they are going to be supplementary to one another, which means that I can put together uh, 8y, the, the measurement of whatever 8y minus 2 is, is going to be equal to, I'll try to squeeze it in here, I can say 180 degrees minus 78 degrees. And Nina is saying we know that 8y minus 2 and 2z or 2z uh, have to equal 180 degrees. Okay, we'll use that knowledge in just one second to solve for number 9 because once we know what 8y minus 2 is equal to, we can use that um, to form the two supplementary angles. So when you solve for this, you should get, again, supposing that I did my math correct, uh, you should get that y is equal to 13, and then I'm going to use what... Uh, Nina said, and jump to number nine here. And Nina said that we kind of have a straight angle on its side, which means that 8y minus 2 plus 2z, 2z uh, is equal to 180 degrees. They are supplementary to one another. And when you solve that, after you plug in, you substitute what we got for y, you should get that this is equal to 39 degrees, All right? And another word for, or another term for, um, what could we call here? Angle Z, angle Z, and X plus nine, or sorry, I should say two times Z, two times Z, and X plus nine is uh, corresponding angles, okay? And you might, know about this from class as uh, F patterns, okay? We just use something different here, which is perfectly fine, okay? Hopefully you all are following along, okay? Uh, and maybe I will, let's see our next problem here. We have lines T and U are parallel, so how about I leave it there for now and if you guys can take a look at the follow along document and try out questions 10, 11, and 12 on your own, we can revisit that as the first problem for tomorrow's class. So I challenge you to work on that on your own. Bring those answers with you tomorrow when we continue this discussion on angle measurements, or sorry, angle relationships. And I also challenge you to tell me or bring with you two pieces of knowledge. So one would be when I have a triangle what do all of the angles add up to be? So I needed that piece of information tomorrow. I'm going to rely on you guys to help me. I need that piece of information. And then if I have a rectangle, so a let's say a four-sided shape, let's say then a five-sided shape, a really poorly drawn five-sided shape, so a pentagon. <laughs> let's see how I can do this. And then let's say a hexagon and so on. So as I add more sides to my shapes, how many triangles can I fit in there? Okay. And uh, more importantly, what's the least number of triangles 
I can fit into each of those shapes. Hopefully I worded that correctly. We'll revisit that tomorrow. Please bring those two pieces of information with you. Um, I'll rely on you to help me out. Challenge yourself to try out this next problem regarding lines T and U, which are parallel. So it'll be very similar to the problem we just worked on. I am going to leave it there for today. I hope to see you all tomorrow. If you need to revisit this lesson to make sure you're following along tomorrow, I highly recommend that. Um, there are more problems on that worksheet to try out. I'll have another one for you tomorrow as well. Have a wonderful day, everybody. I can't wait to work on more math tomorrow, right before the weekend. Uh, enjoy your day, smile a lot, and we will see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. It's afternoons that seem to be the most hectic for us, so it was much more convenient when we found Mathnasium at home. All right, so how do we do half of five? I think one of the best things about at home is that it really feels like you're almost at home with the student in their house teaching them. I'm in my comfort zone. You can just ask for help and the instructor will come right to you. With Mathnasium at home, I know that they're getting the help that they need. Awesome, great job. Mathnasium, changing lives through math.